Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be making a frame rate counter. You might find it useful for debugging purposes or for quick performance tests on devices like phones and tablets. So let's get started. I have an empty scene prepared here. I'm gonna use a already made scene from the asset store as our test for today. It's my favorite called Nature Starter Kit 2. Okay, let's import it into our project. Alright, now that it's ready, let's open the main scene, the demo scene, and go to the scene view, and now let's add a HUD to our, to our scene so we can see the frame rate counter somewhere up here, so let's, uh, let's create a UI panel and it's gonna create the canvas as well okay so we have the panel here good let's resize it and make it the size of our box up here where we want uh, the frame rate to go in okay now let's create also a text Let's center it and make, make it a little bigger maybe. We might want the panel to be invisible. Okay, let's, let's make the text a different color so we can see it. Maybe white's a good option. Let's make it a 20 and let's say frame rate. There we go. Let's make it even a little bit bigger. Thing is now we have to make sure it fits into this. There we go. Let's put it up here. Let's call it frame rate text. And let's duplicate it. This is going to be called frame rate, just frame rate, and it's going to have nothing in it. And let's move it here. So this is going to be the actual frame rate, which is going to be displayed when we're going to calculate it. We also want it to be on this side. There we go. And now without further ado let's create a script a c sharp script that will calculate our frame rate let's call it frame rate counter and let's open it in visual studio okay so we'll going to need the update function only so we're going to need two variable for starters and that's gonna be one that will track the time and one that will track the frames. So let's call the first one, it's gonna be an int and it's called frame counter. And it's gonna start, let's just define it as zero. You can also make it private. And another one for the time, this is gonna be a float. Let's call it time counter. It's also going to be zero. There we go. And maybe a third one that's going to hold the, the reference to our text, which is going to be updated. But for that one, we're going to need uh, to use the UI, unityengine.ui. 
there we go so let's say here um, and here's a little trick you can you can make it public so you can see it in in the inspector in unity or you can just put this tag before it and call serialize field and make it private so this is a text and it's gonna be frame rate text there we go what we want to do in the update function is to calculate this frame rate as an average over a certain period of time because uh, from frame to frame the difference might might be uh, very high so the frame times are usually very dependent on what is rendered at that moment so it is better to calculate it on a certain period of time i usually use about uh, 100 milliseconds so i update it one every 100 milliseconds so for that regard we're gonna need another variable which is gonna be this interval of time so let's say private float refresh time so it's basically the time that will take to to re refresh our frame rate counter so let's let's put it at 100 milliseconds for now so basically 0 0.1 seconds uh, you can play with it and see what works for you the the fewer times it updates the better it is for your game but that doesn't actually really matter because you're debugging anyway so let's see if the time counter didn't reach this refresh time we're just going to add to the time counter the amount of time that it took to render this frame so time dot delta time that's the amount of time it takes to render the current frame and also increase the frame count frame counter plus plus there you go now if it did reach the refresh time else we are going to calculate the average on that amount of time so we'll need another variable let's call it uh, last frame rate there we go and it's calculated by dividing the frame counter by the time counter and as you can see we run into a little bit of a problem here because uh, we are dividing an integer by a float and we are trying to store it in an integer so all we have to do is actually store it in a float anyway uh, moving on we just have to reset the frame counter to zero and also the frame time uh, the time counter to zero and for the last thing we just update our text frame rate text oh I just noticed it's not called properly frame rate text there you go frame rate text dot text equals our last frame rate to string so it, it gets the the float and transforms it to a string what we might also want to do is cast it to a two decimal places number just because the when you're dividing such numbers they you might have like 10 decimal places and you don't really want that 
so what we can do is specify in when we transform it to string we can say n2 here and it's only going to use two decimal places for the transformation and yeah the, let's have a look we're gonna save it and let's go back to unity and let's put this frame rate counter on the panel here let's add it to the panel and let's add the frame rate into the box here if we save it and press play we should be able to see a average frame rate so what we can do is take it a little step further and calculate like the minimum and the maximum frame rate so if we go here to the panel and let's just duplicate those Now, if we go back to our script, and we're going to need a few more variables here. We're also going to need two more text fields. And the only problem is that usually when you start a game, uh, the frame rate goes down rapidly for a for a few fractions of a second so if it will mess up the minimum frame rate if you do that it will say something like 5 or 10 frames per second as the minimum frame rate because of that short period of time when you start the game and it takes a, a, a long time so what we can do is use the start method to reset the minimum frame rate after about a second or two seconds into the game's launch so the minimum frame rate counter will have a fresh perspective on what the minimum frame rate is this is a little bit hacky but it, it um, it's a method that i found it works if we just say if we start a coroutine in the start method and let's have here the the function private it's gonna be a private enumerator let's call it reset mean frame rate and inside here we're gonna yield return a new When you wait for seconds and let's say we wait for one second after the game starts and you can see how long it how long it takes to start the game so you can adjust that period of time yourself and okay we started the coroutine and inside here we'll put this function and after we waited for a second we're just gonna to put minimum frame rate back to a thousand not a hundred a thousand there we go so now down here we can just calculate those minimum frame rates very easily by saying if minimum frame rate is bigger than last frame rate minimum frame is going to take the, the amount of last frame rate and if max frame rate is smaller than last frame rate max frame rate is going to take its value and also down here let's update the text
so now if we save and go back to unity we should after we 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 add the minimum frame rate to their specific boxes here to the specific fields there we go if we press play we should have a minimum frame rate and a maximum frame rate you saw how in the beginning there it was like eight frames per second yeah that's because of those few moments when when the game kind of stucks when it starts playing but immediately after it resets and it gives you like the minimum frame rate and you can see we have a minimum frame rate of 54 frames per second and a maximum of 98 and you can see it dropped to 39 here okay so that's it thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you want to see more content like this please subscribe and if you have the possibility please consider supporting me on patreon from just a dollar a month See you next time.